Okay, so we are beginning our online international education fair and the webinar is about to start. I can see we have about 100 students. I want to thank you for joining us today. I hope this is going to be a useful information when you're going to be attending till the end of the webinar. You will be able to learn about the scholarships, application fee waivers, the COVID-19 updates and many more. So watch till the end and ask any question that you have. I hope it's going to be worth. Thanks. So greetings from Sacramento. We are California State University, Sacramento, and we're located in the capital. So I'd like to share a little bit of information about the school and you're going to see here some images about um, the areas surrounding Sacramento. So we've got fantastic geographical location. Um, we're near downtown in the capital. Um, wonderful area uh, to take advantage of all the outdoor activities. Um, there's a wonderful river nearby campus. So definitely a wonderful place. So a little bit more information specifically about where we're located. So we're about an hour and a half from the Pacific Ocean and San Francisco, which I know is a big draw to a lot of students. We're also about half an hour, um, an hour and a half to two hours, depending on traffic from Silicon Valley, which I know is also a big draw for students that are interested in STEM. A lot of our students who graduate go on to work at a lot of the companies in Silicon Valley. So it's quite close to Sacramento. And then we're just about an hour and a half from the mountains, so perfect for skiing. And then on top of that, you'll see a wonderful image of Sacramento and the waterways downtown and all the wonderful things that you can do living in Sacramento. So a little bit more information as to where we're located. And we're um, Northern California and about five hours away uh, driving from Los Angeles. So if you hop on a plane, it's a very short plane ride, only about 45 to 50 minutes. So we are in the CSU system, which means that we're part of a very large public education system in California. We are the sixth largest CSU campus with about 33,000 students. And we have a total of 700 international students, give or take, representing over 120 countries. Out of those international students, about 400 students are from India. So a lot of activity. We do have um, organizations specifically dedicated to um, welcoming international students from India. So our Indian students are very active in do an excellent job at connecting with our incoming new students. So there's a lot of bonding that goes on there. We've got 58 undergraduate degree programs, 45 graduate degree programs as well. So different majors to select from. One of the wonderful things about being at a CSU, specifically Sacramento, is the small class size. So for our first time freshmen that are starting, very rarely will a class have more than 100 students. Most of our classes are, are fairly small and we try to ensure that students are going to be taking classes their first year that are in the smaller scale. So the largest class might be about 70 students or so, but most of our beginning classes are very small and especially as you continue on through your courses, they're going to remain small. So we are the fifth safest campus when you look at all the UC and CSU schools in California. And those are a lot of schools when you put them all together. We are an incredibly safe campus and I know that's very important to parents. The way our campus is designed, it's sort of tucked away within the city of Sacramento and we've got um, a river that borders the campus. So it's very difficult to get onto campus if you're not an actual student our faculty or staff. And so we don't have a lot of traffic that passes through, which makes it um, fairly private. Um, additionally, we've got a lot of student clubs and organizations. We've got plus 300 student organizations to select from. So if there's something that you're interested in that you don't see, 
a lot of our students start their own clubs. A couple years ago, we didn't have an international student association on campus. And so a few of our students decided, hey, we're gonna start an international student association. And we have a very active student organization now with a lot of events and activities throughout the year for international students. Um, when you look at the Western United States, our campus is the seven most diverse university in the Western US. So cost of study, which I know is an incredibly important factor as you decide where to apply and where you're going to end up attending. So I've laid out here the different costs of studying at Sac State for undergraduate students and graduate students. So as you'll see, in comparison to other schools, we are an actual quite affordable um, university to attend being located in Northern California. So California is known for high cost, especially for school and for cost of living. Thankfully, especially where we're located, we still have a relatively affordable cost of living in California. Um, definitely, if you're going to compare the cost of living in California to somewhere in the Midwest, we are going to be more expensive. But given the proximity being so close to San Francisco and Silicon Valley, where the cost of living is outrageous and quite unaffordable, we're still quite affordable. And the cost on a daily, or I'm sorry, on a yearly basis for undergraduates varies around $30,000. And that's approximating living expenses. Definitely living expenses is the item where students have the most flexibility on. So students will either rent homes or apartments. Sometimes you can live with a family, which brings down the cost. So there's different types of living options that can bring down the cost of living. So academics at Sacramento State, as I mentioned, we've got a variety of different majors to choose from and different colleges. So out of the different colleges, every single college focuses on different disciplines and fields. The most popular college amongst international students is going to be the College of Engineering and Computer Science. So the majority of our students are majoring in computer science, um, electrical and electronic engineering, mechanical engineering, civil and computer engineering. All of our students are actively pursuing the uh, internship options that they have available to them while they're studying. And obviously when they graduate, they've got access to optional practical training. The great thing about our College of Engineering and Computer Science is that we've got a specific um, career advisor within that college that works very actively with our students in international, I, I want to emphasize, on finding internships and co-ops that will allow them to take different types of opportunities, gain academic credit for them, as well as start to build their network of potential work opportunities so that when they graduate, they'll be able to move into positions that qualify for OPT. And I have to say that most of our students are very, very successful at finding well-paid jobs after they graduate. Um, Sacramento has a couple of different companies, such as Intel, where a lot of our students start getting practice there through their internships. Some end up using that internship experience and move on to um, Silicon Valley to find something else there. The other major that is quite popular is business administration located within the College of Business Administration. So business administration has different concentrations. There are 12 to select from, so everything from accountancy to international business to marketing to supply chain management. And students will be able to select and fine tune their concentration when they get to their upper division coursework. So when they first start out, all students basically start with the same um, undergraduate coursework. And then once they move into their upper division coursework, that's when they'll start to refine the different types of areas that they want to concentrate in. So undergraduate admission requirements. For undergraduates, it's a very straightforward process. We do require class 10 and 12 marks and the um, exam results for evaluation. And currently, and usual practices, even before COVID-19, we do accept unofficial documents for everything and do an electronic review and 
are able to provide an adamant decision based on that. Once offered admission, we do require official to be submitted. So on the English proficiency exam, we do require TOEFL or IELTS in the PTE. However, given the circumstances of COVID-19, we are currently accepting Duolingo. The at-home IELTS indicator that will be released on April 22nd. And I understand that TOEFL will begin administering an at-home test. So given the different types of exams right now, we're willing to accommodate students and to be able to find different opportunities for them. If there's an exam that you've come across, let us know. Right now, we're evaluating every single type of option that is available to students and trying to make a holistic decision based on the current circumstances. However, I would recommend Duolingo for all students since that's fairly easily to access. For Duolingo, we do require a minimum 95. And just to note that SAT is not required. However, um, we are accepting a minimum 550 on the writing, um, I'm sorry, the reading portion in order to waive TOEFL or IELTS. So if you have SAT scores, feel free to submit those. But again, those are not required. So for the grad admission requirements, now these are a little bit more nuanced and it will depend on the program. I will address the programs that are of most popularity with students applying from India. So computer science is by far the most popular major at the graduate level for students applying from India. And the requirements for that program are the GRE and TOEFL or IELTS plus academic transcripts. Now, because of the sheer volume of applications that they receive, and I will give you um, the fall 2020 intake as an example. We've received upwards of 800 applications for about 50 spots. So what that means is the department is really focusing on the GRE exam, the undergraduate coursework and GPA to really determine admission. So other factors that they will consider our letters of recommendation, a CV, specifically if you've got experience working in the field already, and an SOP or statement of purpose is not required, but some students submit it. Based on this year and the level of applications submitted, they really are focusing mostly on the GRE and GPA. So for GRE to be competitive, they're going to be looking more specifically at the quantitative. And I would say that students that are more likely to be admitted have quantitative scores that are going to be upwards of 157 or higher. And they'll be looking at the percentiles. The, the verbal does not matter as much, and they're not going to be focusing on what the verbal score is. It's mostly the quantitative. So we would ask that students that are thinking about quanti or computer science to really focus on the GRE and the quantitative. Um, you know, the GPA currently is a minimum 3.25, but keep in mind that as a number of applications are submitted, it only brings up the GPA requirement a little bit higher. So I believe for this year's pool, the average GPA uh, is about a 3.49. So again, if students are scoring around, you know, a 3.2 and the majority of everyone has a GPA that's higher, that application will be less competitive. For the other programs, the engineering programs, such as electrical engineering, which is quite popular, and then civil and mechanical. So again, it will vary. Um, GRE is required for computer engineering and electrical and electronic. It is not required for the mechanical engineering program um, or the civil. Keep in mind though that these requirements do change every year and um, they will be reevaluating on a yearly basis whether the GRE is included within the actual um, application requirements. So previously it had not been required for computer engineering or known as CPE, but this year um, it was a firm requirement. Lastly, the MBA program again. So the MBA program is another program that is of particular interest for international students and 
they accept the GRE or GMAP. They do look at work experience quite a bit. So I would recommend taking a closer look at the years of experience, about five years or so, and um, ensuring that you do have that. Or if you don't, reach out to the program coordinator and we can help you with that, especially if you reach out to international admissions to schedule an appointment via Zoom with the coordinator because she'll take a look at your application before you submit it and let you know what the likelihood is of you being a good candidate for the program. And so the international, um, I'm sorry, the MBA program has its three different options. We recommend the MBA and the international MBA on campus to students. The executive is typically a part-time program and has classes on Fridays and Saturdays every other weekend uh, and really focuses on work experience. So those students that are most competitive for the executive MBA program have about 10 years of work experience. And again, the GRE or GMAT is accepted. So our deadlines for undergraduate are still open. We do accept through July 1st for undergraduates applying for the fall 2020 intake. For spring 2021, we'll be opening on August 1st for graduate deadlines. So the majority of our grad programs, specifically the STEM ones, have already closed. Those tend to close on March 1st. A handful of the social science ones are open through April 1st. For spring intake, we will open on August 1st, and that application deadline for graduates is September 15th. So keep in mind that for graduate students for spring intake, it's a much, much tighter application um, timeline. And then um, lastly, we do encourage you to reach out to us to ensure that the program that you're interested in applying to is open for spring. Thankfully, though, for most students that are um, applying to us from India, they're interested in STEM majors and all of our STEM majors, specifically the engineering and computer science are open for the spring intake. So given everything that's happened with COVID-19, I do want to address applications that are being submitted as well as admission offers. So we are currently going to be reviewing as if we're planning the fall 2020 semester to begin in a face-to-face -face format. We understand that the situation is changing, it's dynamic, we don't really know what to expect, and there is a potential that we would have to continue our current instruction into a virtual format for fall 2020. And that poses problems for students that are coming to us from abroad. If that is the case, we are working on deferring application offers. So students won't have to do any work, we'll simply be rolling over admission offers and allowing students to have the opportunity if they want to start online or if they want to start face-to-face -face in spring 2021, they would be able to do so and no further action would be needed from the student. And then this is just a glimpse at what programs do accept um, applications in the spring intake. These are available on our website as well. Student employment opportunities, I covered this a little bit. Um, all of our students do have the opportunity to work on campus. Um, they can participate in an internship through co-op or CPT and then OBT. Within the Sacramento region, we've got some excellent companies where a lot of our students end up doing a lot of their internships or even um, receiving job offers. So we've got Intel, Hewlett Packard, Apple, Aerojet, and then Oracle. So those are really popular with our students majoring in computer science or engineering. Lastly, we've got some excellent resources for students at Sac State, especially with clubs and getting involved. And then on-campus housing. This is open to all students, both undergrad and grad and they can apply online. That application is currently open, but a lot of our students choose to live off campus. It is not required to live on campus and it is a little bit more expensive. So a lot of students decide to cut costs by living off campus. And there's a lot of different resources. Our office does provide students in connecting them to off-campus opportunities. And lastly, that's a fun picture of Sacramento and all the different activities that we have. So with that, I will close out the presentation. If you have any questions, feel free to indicate those in the chat box.
So this brings us to the end of the webinar. I hope the information that you have gained today is going to be useful for you for up and making an application to the university. If you still have any question or any query about applying to the university, then you contact one of the study metro representative. Thank you so much again for joining this webinar. Have a good one.